How can we compute the matrix exponential function if we have a scaling rotation matrix C? The answer is surprisingly easy, as you can see in the theorem 1. In this video, we will both prove the theorem and use it to compute the matrix exponential function in an explicit example. So, how do we compute e to the power ct? Well, our c looks as a, a, b, minus b, and we can write our matrix C as a sum of two matrices, A times an identity matrix plus B times the J matrix, where J is this matrix over here. Okay, so far so good. There is something special about J. Computing powers of J is easy, because J squared, which we compute over here, row column rule, minus one, zero, 0 and minus 1, so j squared is over here, is minus the identity matrix. So j squared equals minus the identity matrix. So if you compute, for example, j to the power 4, you get j squared times j squared, you get the identity matrix. And j to the power 5 gives you identity times j, gives you j again. So computing powers of j is easy. We will use that later on. And then we have our theorem e to the power ct, how do you compute it? Well, you know it need only a and b, the numbers a and b, e to the power at, and then we get identity matrix times cosine bt plus j matrix times sine bt. So if you have a and b, you can write down immediately what e to the power ct is. So why does this formula over here hold? Let's do a small proof. And after that, we will do an example. So, what's the proof? First of all, you say, okay, e to the power ct, you use this combination over here, plug it in, and then we have that e to the power a plus b equals e to the power a times e to the power b, b. If the matrices a and b commute, and that's the case over here, so we have this product of two matrix exponentials. Now, the first matrix exponential is easy because we have a diagonal matrix. We have already seen before how that is done. e to the power a t times the identity matrix is just an identity matrix with e to the power a t's on its diagonal. So e to the power a t times identity matrix. Okay, that's the first part. Then the second part. For that part, we use the definition. So e to the power bt times j, bt j in the exponential, uh, use the definition, the power series of the exponential function. So we have sum n from 0 to infinity, then bt j to the power n divided by n factorial over here. And then we split this up in even terms and odd terms. So that's all we do here. Split the sum up in its even terms, n equals 0 to 4, and odd terms 1, 3, 5. Okay, then it's, it is convenient to uh, define a new index for both of them. So this exponential is given by, for the first sum, we say, well, our uh, um, uh, 2k equals n, so n is 2k, so that means uh, our k runs from 0, 1, 2 in order to get n 0 to 4. So put n equals 2k here and here. And then our k runs from 0 to infinity. And similarly for the second sum, we set n equals 2k plus 1, because then we can again run uh, k from 0 up to infinity. Because if we set uh, n equals 2k plus 1, then for k equals 0, we get 1. For k equals 1, we get 3. For k equals 2, we get 5, and so on. So we have k equals 0 to infinity. Here 2k plus 1 factorial, and then uh, 2k plus 1 over there as well. And then we have the uh, following trick. We have a j to the power 2k, but j to the power 2k can be written easier. That is j squared to the power k. But j squared is just minus identity. So we have minus identity to the power k, so that gives us a minus 1 to the power k, and identity to the power k is just identity. And similarly for the j to the power 2k plus 1, there we have a j 
times j to the power 2k. But j to the power 2k was just the minus 1 to the power k times identity. So we get the minus 1 to the power k and identity times j is just j, of course. And now we're done because here we recognize the Taylor series of the cosine of bt. And here we recognize the Taylor series of the sine of bt. So e to the power bt times j uh, is just cosine bt times i plus sine times sine bt times j. And then combining those two, so um, this one over here and uh, this expression over here, we get e to the power ct equals e to the power ati times e to the power btj. Uh, and then, of course, you can uh, uh, have i times i, this i times i is just i, and i times j is j. So that gives us the formula from theorem 1. Now, let's do it in a small example. Compute e to the power ct, where c is this scaling rotation matrix over here. Now, in this case, we can read off a equals 3 and b equals 1. So what do we get for e to the power ct? We can plug in a equals 3 and b equals 1. Gives us an e to the power 3t i times cosine 1t, i times cosine t, plus j times sine 1t, so sine t over here. So there we go. And you can even merge it into one matrix, the, uh, this part over here. It's better. I, I would always leave the e to the power 3t in front, but you can merge the other two. Uh, and there you have your expression for e to the power ct.